My problems began when I went to celebrate the company that I work at, at the Crossroads Dinner Theater. My boss was celebrating a successful year of both profits and growth, of selling routes through the paths. So naturally, he thought it was a good idea to celebrate in the place where all paths meet, the Crossroads. Despite what one would think about the name, the Crossroads was just a dinner theater. A place where anyone could meet up and eat dinner and watch a show. The food and shows always varied wildly, but still, at the time, I was so excited to see what they had. When I was outside the door to the crossroads, I was in a full suit and a top hat, all dressed up for the dinner. Some kind of rule of the place said to dress nicely, I, I don't know really. I didn't pay a whole lot of attention to the rules when they were explained. Well, I'm sorry I didn't pay attention. Working anywhere near the paths, you're, all, you're used to all kinds of weird rules, but the ones in the crossroads were even worse. The hosts play by the rules, but they don't play fair. All masks will be left at the door. Your first blow will be your last. Don't gamble with fate unless you're willing to gamble with your fate. Anything can be dinner. Anything can be theater. It was all really confusing. It was like something out of Through the Looking Glass but at the time, I was honestly half expecting a white rabbit to lead us to our tables. Instead of a white rabbit, what happened was the host led us to our table directly. He was a very tall and very slender man. His suit was red as blood with a royal blue top hat. I couldn't see his face because some kind of shadow obscured his face underneath his hat. I wasn't sure where it came from. Maybe with some kind of magic? Maybe he had a veil under his hat? I don't know. He even carried around a sword cane with him. But from how he carried himself, I don't think he needed it. He walked with no fear, all confidence, and gentle grace. Even the terrifying trolls and dastardly demons avoided eye contact with him. It was clear, even to a tipicam like me, the host was not someone you fucked with. Welcome, 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 three times welcome, honored guest. Please take your place before your plates take your table, he told us in a jovial manner. My chair was comfortable, I admit, but the place in front of me was open. No plate, no silverware, no napkin, only a glass of water and a crystal chalice. Seeing the odd placemat, or lack thereof, I turned to the host and asked him, just as he was turning away to greet the other guests, Do you know when we can see some menus? The host froze in place. His body turned towards the new guests, but his hat and shadowy face instead turned towards me. His head was completely opposite his body, like he was an owl, or like he was possessed. I honestly doubt the host could be involved in the possession unless he was the one doing the possessing. We don't bother with menus here, nor do we bother with show times. We deliver the best food and the best shows for our best patrons, and we deliver the worst guests to our patrons. So, I advise be patient, be polite, and be peaceful. If you wish to remain a patron and not a pate. The host's words were a lot less nice this time. It was almost like there was a storm hidden in his suit and hat. I responded only by nodding, hoping not to anger our host any more than I already did. He seemed to simmer down some after I nodded. But even while he walked away, his hat and face were still pointed at me. I felt like he was watching me, even while he spoke to the other guests. Before I even got a chance to ask my laughing co-workers what the hell happened, the lights dimmed. The stage in the front of the room lit up. It was much bigger than the dining room. It looked like it could fit a stadium of gladiators and still have room for a swan lake or two. A different person stood on the stage. 
She looked like she could be related to the host. She was just as tall as him and wore the same kind of hat. But her suit was purple instead of red. And instead of a cane sword, she had an hourglass in her left hand with the sands flowing up instead of down. And instead of a shadow underneath her hat, her face was lit up like a spotlight. It was actually impossible to make out what she looked like because her face was glowing too much. It was like trying to look directly at the sun. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the show. We have a rare treat for everyone tonight. We have the Puppets Promenade, where we have our very own Fortuna performing a traditional ballet. Once her dance is done, appetizers will be served for everyone, and then we'll be moving on to the real show. The narrator on the stage finished, and then she took a big bow, taking off her hat as she completely vanished right as the curtain rose. I guess she didn't want to outshine the show. What was on the stage was not something I expected from a puppet show. In the center of the stage, dressed in a golden ballerina outfit, was the puppet Fortuna. She was life-sized and she was very prominently tied to the strings that led up into the darkness above. Her hands, her legs, and even her head were all held up by the silver strings. Her right arm was curved above her head as she began her dance. If there were words that could properly portray what she did, I would say them. But all I can say is that Fortuna danced with more grace than I thought was humanly possible. She swayed and she spun and she left, all without a single sound and everyone was transfixed by her. Her leaps lasted longer and longer each time, her feet never even needing to touch the ground. But the more I saw her dance, while everyone else seemed to be focusing on her, I couldn't help but focus on her strings. The silver shined in the low light and it appeared to be part of the show. Surely the strings were why she was so high in the air, right? It was why she moved so well and surely that is what made her so special. Still, as the show continued, I couldn't help but wonder, how do they manage the strings? Was there a giant engine up there moving them? It couldn't be. There was no noise in the theater other than the odd cough. I couldn't even hear the clanking of wood while the marionette moved. Maybe there was a group of people up there, each one moving a single string? But if that was the case, they must be incredibly in sync to even attempt something like this. One wrong move by even half an inch and the entire dance would be done. I still found myself thinking about the strings even when the show finally shot, stopped. Fortuna, the marionette, took her bow and the curtain dropped. The host and the narrator appeared on opposite ends of the stage. We will, we will now have, have a brief intermission, intermission of 15 minutes. minutes. Feel, free Feel free to wander, wander. but do but be in your seats before, before the intermission, intermission is over. over. Otherwise, Otherwise, you will not get to see the, see the show. show. They both spoke in unison. Once that was done, people began to chat again. Some people were going to other tables. And as for me, I wanted a closer look at that marionette. I told my boss I was going to go use the restroom and he gave me directions to the restroom. Apparently it was near the stage, but I was supposed to take a left rather than a right because right leads right on stage. Well, that was easy. I took the right when no one was looking and sure enough, I was behind the curtain. On the stage, it was dark, except for a single spotlight that was shining on Fortuna. She still stood in the center of the stage, still in her bowing pose. Getting closer, I didn't see anyone near her, so I got even closer. When I was close to the marionette, I could see the amount of detail they put on her. Her hair looked real. Maybe they used a wig with actual human hair. 
Her skin even had little imperfections, such as a mole on her cheek. And her eyes even had little veins painted into the white wood. This level of detail was incredible. Someone clearly put a lot of love into this puppet just to add things that no one else was going to see. I reached my hand to the string that connected to her head and I could see that it reached into her hair but I couldn't see where it tied into her scalp. Thinking it was going to be okay, I gently grabbed the string and followed it down to where it reached her head. I didn't mean to do what I did next, I just wanted to see if it was a hook or a hole or something and what was keeping the string attached to her. What I didn't expect was as soon as I touched her head for her string to snap. I heard the snap and the puppet's head slumped forward while the string got caught in my wristwatch. Now panicking, I, I grabbed at the head and tried to see if I could find the hook to see if I can find anything. What I wasn't expecting was for Fortuna's head to feel so soft, for her flesh to be warm. I realized just a moment too late that this marionette wasn't wood. She was very much warm and very much alive. I let go of her head and tried to run after away, but after a few steps, the string on my wrist stopped me. It pulled me back towards the center of the stage and I was panicking even more as I tried to unclip the string from my wristwatch, but I couldn't do it. Checking my watch closer, I realized that the string wasn't caught on it, not at all. It was embedded into my skin. I don't mean that it was hooked or that it was tied to my wrist. I mean it stuck through my skin, through my wrist, and felt like it was hooked into my radius and ulna bones. What's going on here? I asked, trying to get the string out of me. I also tried to snap it, but instead of that working, the moment my right hand grabbed onto that string, a new string embedded its itself into my new arm. Now, both of my arms were bound by the string above. I could feel the force above pulling my arms apart so that I wasn't going to be able to free myself. Whatever or whoever was holding my strings above, it was strong. I don't think I even managed to budge it even an inch. And while I struggled, I heard a chuckle from the heap that was Fortuna. <laughs> well, 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 looks like the curious cat got trapped. Didn't anyone tell you not to play with things that don't belong to you? Fortuna stood. She still had her grace, but now there were no strings on her. Not anymore. You wanted to find out who was the puppet master? Well, you should have been more considerate of your own strings before trying to find the ends of others. But now, you will get your wish. Fortuna reached over and plucked at the string that was holding my spine through my head. To call it painful would be an understatement. Have you ever heard a bass so loud that your entire body vibrates from it? It was a bit like that, but it was even harder. My spine shook and my body spasmed. If I wasn't held up by the numerous strings, I honestly think I would have collapsed and passed out. I felt like I couldn't even breathe and my heart couldn't beat, not while the vibrations played through my body. Well, all you have to do, little puppet, is just the hardest thing in the world. She cleaned in close for my, her next words. <laughs> Look up. <laughs> she giggled at me as she walked away. At this point, there were strings in my arms, my legs, my feet, my head, and even a string on my jaw. I couldn't even scream because I couldn't open my mouth. The only thing I could control was my eyes. I couldn't even speed up my breathing or even properly feel angry. My heart rate 
was slow. A string leading through my spine led through my heart. Every little beat was because of a tiny tug on the string. I didn't even have the courtesy to control my own heart. Even that belonged to the puppet master. I had no control over my body, no control over my freedom, and I couldn't even properly process my feelings. That was hell. Or at least I thought it was hell. Just until the strings began to move. It started with my wrists and then my legs. Despite being moved by the strings above, my muscles were still as tense as wood. I couldn't relax them and it felt like whoever the puppet master was, they didn't want to bother with my muscles as long as my body was being jerked around in the right way. After my arms and legs were dragged along just a few times, I could feel bruises already forming and the pain deep in my bones was only getting worse. It felt like the silver strings were burrowing deeper and deeper into my bones, like worms into soil. I remembered mentally shuddering at the thought of my bones slowly being replaced by the string, until even the act of breathing was controlled by the puppet master. I then felt the string on my head jerk my face back. I heard a crack in my neck and I had a hard time breathing after that. But there was nothing I could do to help it. This time though, instead of the strings leading into shadow, I could see where the strings led. And I could see the many fingers that were controlling them. And I could see the face those fingers belong to. If my mouth was capable of screaming, or if my heart was capable of pounding, or if my breath was capable of catching, I'm certain all three would have happened right then. The puppet master's face, the one who is controlling my movements, controlling my body, and controlling my freedom, he had my face. He had my face. He even had my smile. And he had my laugh. He had my laugh while he jerked my body around. For the second time that night, I would have given up my life just to scream. Once the intermission was over, the narrator on the stage was presenting to the crowd. Well, esteemed guests, now is the time for the real show. As you know, in the Crossroads Dinner Theater, anything can be theater. And tonight, we have a brand new puppet for the Puppets Promenade. She finished with a flourish, and the curtain pulled up. In the center of the stage was a man in a top hat and a suit. He was bound in silver strings and if one looked closely, they could have seen where Crimson was slowly dripping away from where the strings met his body. The theater played the can-can while the man's body jerked and danced along with the music. The audience loved it. Mostly with smiles and laughs, but at one table, a woman in a golden dress toasted to the puppet while she sat with her new co-workers, and she was happy to have found a brand new job, and to have found someone to take her old job. Hello. My newest employee asked me to share his story. It was the least I could do. And it was honestly the most I wanted to do. Remember, the Crossroads is a dinner theater. And in dinner, there are diners who do the dining. And then there are those who are dined on. So, be a respectful diner. If you don't want to wind up served, 
And in the theater, there is the audience, and there are the players. If you refuse to play a respectful audience, well then, respectfully, you're auditioning to be a player. So, play your roles well before your role plays you. And oh, and if you're wondering how to free him, I cannot free him. That is all up to his puppet master, and quite honestly, I don't think he's willing to let himself go. Mm, not yet, at least. <laughs>